Welcome. Let me talk about the vinculum. The vinculum is the name of that horizontal bar that one often sees in different places in mathematics. So the horizontal bar actually has a special name, it's called a vinculum. And it's used whenever we want to group symbols together. For example, in the olden days, it first appeared in the mid-1400s, mathematicians used to write the following. Suppose I wrote uh, 2 plus 3 plus 4, but for some reason I don't want you to get 9, I want you to think of it as definitely as 2 and 3 grouped together first, get 5, and then add to that answer 4. If I'm going to insist you think of it that way, then put a, a vinculum on the top of the 2 and 3. So that means group the 2 and 3 together first, get the answer, and then add 4. If I want to do it the other way around, think of 3 and 4 as grouped together first, that's fine. Put a vinculum across those guys, and that tells me to think of this as 2 plus, oh, 3 plus 4 is a group, 2 plus 7. Great. Um, I could do, I could make this even longer if I wanted to, um, but the addition is not very exciting. Let's put some numbers in the front. I could do, say, a vinculum within a vinculum like this, and then I might want to do that, and then I might want to do that, and then I might want to do this, and then it gets, just gets crazy. Um, in fact, I've run out of space. Let me just get some more space. Um, and maybe I'll put a vinculum over here. And then I'll, whoops, over the six, get it over the six. And I'll put a vinculum over here, get over the seven. Well, if I put this crazy, put one at the, one at the front, put a vinculum over that. There is a crazy nest of vinculums within vinculums. But actually, even though it's complicated, this is actually visually very clear on what I need to do. I can just look at this guy and see, all right, the innermost vinculum is two and three. Do those guys together first. Then I can see the next vinculum up is saying one plus that answer. Then I can see it's that answer plus four. I can actually work my way through this. It's actually a vinculum is a very happy experience. Cool. Now then something happened. Um, the vinculum is actually great, but the mathematicians stopped using it after a while. In fact, instead of writing a whole set of vinculums like this, they would do something crazy as follows in the 1500s. All that nice visual ease changed in preference for something like this. 2 plus 3, parentheses, plus 4, parentheses, 2 plus all that, plus 5 and all that, plus 3 and all that, 1 plus all that, plus 4. Maybe do all that, uh, 2 plus that. Crazy. Now, we have trained ourselves in this day and age to think parentheses within parentheses are fine, that we can actually work our way through it, no, no real worries, and people think this is visually okay. Have you ever tried writing a computer program with parentheses and nested parentheses? Do they have to always flash up to you the different colors about which parentheses go with which? There's something about parentheses that are very hard to read. Um, so the question is, why in the 1500s do people go from being do, using vinculums to doing this horrible thing of all one line text with parentheses? What well, was the invention of the printing press back in the 1500s, I guess it was, or late 1400s? What they used to have to do to textbooks is take a great big table, and if you want to print a book or say a novel, lay all the little individual metal tiles or wooden tiles of letters across this great big table. So there's like a page of text all laid out in little printing tiles. So mind your P's and Q's, don't get them mixed up, that's where that phrase comes from. You cover the tiles with ink, get your big sheet of paper, press it over the tile, table of tiles, get the ink on the paper, lift up again, and then reset the table for the next page. Great. But if you're doing vinculums in a math book, this vinculum here would be a pain to have to print. What they'll do is they set all the tiles out for the, the line of text they've got, 2 plus 3 plus 4, that's fine, here's 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then this vinculum is at half a tile out of whack to the rest of the tiles. So they have to leave that off at first, print everything without the vinculums, take off all the tiles, then put in special vinculum tiles where the vinculums are meant to be like halfway through the text, a real pain, re-ink that, put the, put the same piece of paper back on top just to print the vinculums over and over again. And if you had vinculums within vinculums, it'd be a pain to do once for the first offset tiles of vinculums, then do it all again for the second offset. So mathematicians decided, okay, for the sake of the printing press, let's come up with a way of doing grouping where everything stays in one single line of text. Hence, parentheses were born. So it's because with with them. Um, now, a pain because we now are stuck. Here we are in the 21st century, still dealing with parentheses because of the printing press. I actually think the vinculum is very easy to type on a computer, and I'd actually call for bringing it back. And I've got one piece of justification that goes beyond me just being quirky and liking vinculums. Think about how teachers first teach kids how to read parentheses. Often what they say is, okay, kids, go to the innermost parentheses first. Just underline it. There's the 2 plus 3. And they'll say to the kids, all right, now underline what's the next set of parentheses. They might do that. Then underline the next set of parentheses, and you might do this. And then underline the next set of parentheses. I've seen teachers actually do this with kids. And what are we really teaching them to do? 
is to go back and redraw the vinculums. Because once you've got the vinculums, everything is actually visually clear. So I argue, let's bring back the vinculum and get rid of parentheses. Well, what how serious I am about that. There's something to it. Anyhow, but my point is, I want to mention that the vinculum is still being used in mathematics today. It appears in a number of surprising places. So think about wherever you've seen a horizontal bar in mathematics. And one is actually in fractions. Now, it doesn't look like much of a, a vinculum here, three quarters. But if I wrote to you 2 plus 4 all divided by 3, that horizontal bar is called a vinculum. And it really is grouping. It's saying this entire numerator, this entire group of 2 plus 4 is to be divided by 3. So it's, so it's not just 2 divided by 3 and then add 4 later on. And it's not 4 divided by 3 adding 2 to begin with. It's actually all of 2 plus 4, 6 divided by 3. So we see the vinculum in fractions. In fact, even in algebra, really even something like this, is saying this x plus 1 in the numerator is all one group. This x squared plus 1 in the denominator is all one group. Vinculum means one group, just like parentheses. Um, we see it with this symbol, the radix. In fact, let's, let's, if we're going to teach kids jargon, let's teach them cool jargon. There's the radix. Now, it's the square root symbol, but we often do it with a vinculum for this reason. If I wrote square root 2 plus 3, it's a little unclear. Do I mean the square root of 2 and then add 3? Or do I mean the square root of the group 2 plus 3, namely the square root of 5? Well, if I did a vinculum to go with it, as we often do, then it's very clear in this case I meant the square root of 5. So really, it's the radix. The square root symbol has two symbols. It's got the radix, little hook shape, and it comes with a vinculum. So we see that with the uh, square root sign today. We also see the vinculum in, um, oh, in fact, even just the division symbol. Here's the division symbol, really looks like a fraction. It's a vinculum with two dots. In fact, just while I'm at good jargon, the division symbol itself has a really cool name. It's called an obelus. All right, radix, obelus, vinculum, three of my favorite words. I think every, we should teach all our kids this stuff. Let's get rid of the horrible jargon we make kid, kids learn. Um, Let's see, where else does vinculum appear in math? Oh, anything to do with grouping. I think of another example right off the bat. When I write 0 0.18 and put a bar over the 1.8, there's a convention there that I'm to think of that 1.8 is a little group that actually gets repeated. What we mean by that is 1.8, 1.8, 1.8. So in that sense of infinite decimals with a repeating pattern, we use the vinculum to say repeating of a group. Um, in geometry, if I have a point A and a point B and I put a vinculum above them, what I'm really meaning is that think of the points A and B as grouped together with a line segment. So there it is. There's the vinculum. Several different places in mathematics. We see it at lots of places today. Um, I've probably missed some, but uh, see if you can uh, find some more appearances of the vinculum for yourself. All right, so there it is. Love the vinculum. I say bring the vinculum back. But I do have a puzzle for you about the vinculum. Here's a nice puzzle about the vinculum. Suppose I give you two terms say just uh, a plus b. Well, it's just one way to put a vinculum around those guys, so one way. If I had th three terms, a plus b plus c, well, I could think of this a plus b, and then a plus b, that answer, plus c. Or I could think of this as b plus c, and then a plus all that. So there's two ways to put vinculums around two, a, a sum of three terms. In such a way, I'm be very clear that I'm only ever adding two things at a time. Now, if I did a plus b plus c plus d, maybe I could do those two, then those two, and then those two. That's one way. Or a plus b plus c plus d, maybe I could do those two, and then those two, and then those two. Um, there is actually a little convention here. If I'm only adding two things at a time, I could do two things simultaneously and then do that. Now, if I go through all the possibilities, you'll find there's five ways to place vinculums over four symbols. And I'm just going to give it away. For five terms, a plus b plus c plus d plus e, it turns out there's 14 ways to place a vinculum over those guys. So I've now got the vinculum numbers 1, 2, 5, 14. What's the next one? What's the one after that? What's the one after that? And so on. Actually, I'll, I'll be bad here in the weight of this. I've actually got a video called the parentheses numbers, so I'm calling them the vinculum numbers here, but in the parentheses numbers I actually do exactly all. But I prefer it with the vinculum because and get back to my original point, isn't that just so easy to read? Isn't that really pleasing to the eye? Isn't that lovely? There's my smiley face again. So let's consider bringing the vinculum back. I love that. Thanks so much.